In this video, I just want to go through how I made this Borderlands chest. So how I went through modeling, texturing, rigging, and then animating. So I didn't really want to go through and do a tutorial saying this is how you do it, but I still did want to have some tips and tricks and stuff like that that I use while I am modeling and stuff like that to sort of help the process. Majority of the way that I model and my general Blender workflow, I feel like isn't that right, I guess. Um, it's more or less just, what works for me at the time and especially for like making little videos and stuff like that it's fine in terms of like being game ready assets or anything like that i think i'm far off especially with the amount of strange geometry that was especially in this one like with the um feet here i added in a lot of extra geometry purely as a reference for later on when i was doing the texturing and that will come up later on when i do get to the texturing stage but I did go back and end up cleaning up the geometry because it was creating some sort of like issues with lighting and stuff like that. With the lock, I was gonna try and make it a part of the main chest body, but I think it's important to know when to separate parts of your model and especially when it comes to something that you're gonna be working a fair bit on and you don't wanna sort of destroy the geometry that you're working on. Because if I was to just make this whole part of the chest, I would have had to constantly be changing it, especially when I was chopping and changing with the mirror modifier. And you'll see me do that a lot throughout this whole thing where I'll just delete half the chest and then bring it back with the mirror modifier because I've made small changes. The way I went around the center of the lock there with the um, where the keyhole goes, I just inset the face and then subdivided it. And then using a add-on called loop tools, I basically, you can just right click and then just hit circle and it will change your shape to a circle. Um, and then just scaled it down. And then for the cable, I just use an add-on called extra objects to get the single vertice. Extra objects just adds a lot more primitives to Blender, so you get a lot more extra shapes and stuff like that. Uh, one of them being just a single vertice. So after I've added the single vert, all I'll do is extrude it out to make the rough shape of the cable. And then I'll convert that to a curve, subdivide it, and then in the object data properties, I'll go down to the geometry tab, go down to the level section where it says depth. You pick that up a little bit until it's the right size and then convert that to an object and then you got your cable shape. So for the front two lock pieces, I decided to just keep those as a part of the main mesh. I was going to make them separate objects, but seeing as they were on the front and the back, it just made a little bit more sense to have them be a part of the main mesh. A lot of the way that I modeled this, I was thinking a lot about texturing stage because that's like the main focal point of like Borderlands style. That informed a lot of my decisions on where I'd be placing things and how many separate objects I'd be having. So with the two lock pieces that go in front that flip up, um, I thought it'd be a lot easier to just have one and then mirror it so that when I do unwrap it, the UVs would be overlaid so I'd only have to draw one as opposed to drawing both individually. With the bars that actually come out and lock the chest, I initially had all four sitting there but decided to just keep one again for the same reasons before where I'm just going to be duplicating the object and there's no point creating four separate textures for something that's that small and it's going to go unnoticed. And for the handle I did the same thing I did with the cable where I just add in the single vertice, bend it around, make the shape and then extrude it out. For the underside of the lid I added in a lot of inset faces. Um, that's again purely just for texturing when I get to drawing on the lines is pretty much just a guide. So I'm making the hinge here and something I noticed, especially even while doing this, is that the scale was off and it's a skill that you sort of need to develop in terms of like knowing when to push the shape further than you would normally push it. Um, you see it a lot online with people who are relatively new to 3D software who will make an amazing model and the render will be amazing, but their scale's a little bit off. It's just something you need to work through and sort of push the boundaries of what you're comfortable with making but it does make a big difference when you have the right scale on objects and it's only something small like a hinge but like if I was to keep it as small as I did then it would sort of change the look of the style that I'm going for and those things are important. Coming up on the end of modeling here I'm just making the uh, little trays for the inside um, just sort of cutting in the right shapes and everything and I'll, I add a lot of 
loop cuts and stuff like that here just to sort of make that shape and then I go in, erase some of those and then clean it up for later. And I'll just let that play out until I get to the texturing stage. So after I finished unwrapping the model and, and exporting the UV map, I just brought that into Photoshop where I've got um, PureF open up on the side there with a couple of photos that I found online, just sort of blocking out the main colors and getting in some of the lines. This did take quite a while because I was hand painting everything. I was initially going to go through Substance Painter, which is what I did for all the other assets in the start of the video, but I wasn't getting the results that I was looking for for this because it's so specific and has so much little details going on. But yeah, it's mostly just a bunch of layers and I add a couple uh, grunge maps and stuff like that, that that I would have used in Substance Painter. You can't really see it, but I'm swapping between Photoshop and Blender quite a bit because what I normally do if I'm doing a texture in Photoshop or something like that, I'll export the PSD file and use that as the image texture in Blender so that when I save in Photoshop, it'll automatically update in Blender so I get a real-time view of what I'm doing almost as if I was in Substance Painter or a program like that where I'm getting real-time results. You can see on the lid there where I went over the lines that I was talking about before about adding in extra geometry purely as reference lines. Um, it helps a lot especially when you're hand painting everything to sort of know exactly where it's going instead of just trial and error. And the reference images that I did collect are uh, from both the first game and the second game so they did change the design of the red weapon chest so I'm sort of picking and choosing design aspects from both of those and sort of merging them together like none of the design decisions that I chose to do are like accurate to the game but but it's a good enough mix between the two that you don't really notice all that much and obviously because I'm hand painting this myself I'm making decisions that look, look good with what I've done and taking sort of creative liberties where I see fit. I think all in all my texturing came off a little bit more cartoony than the actual game. Even though the aesthetic of the game is pretty cartoony, it does look like they have used a lot more image textures and then stylized those alongside painting. The rest of this is pretty much all the same, just sort of going through each chunk of the UV map and just adding in colors and textures and all that sort of stuff. With the lid, I wasn't really going to go with that design purely because it was hard to get that sort of diamond shape on the lid. I just ended up getting a picture of fence wire, stretching that out and then selecting it, filling it in, using that as the sort of shape for that. Just before I jump over to the animating stage, I just wanted to go through how I got the lights working. I don't show it here, but all I did was select the green parts that were gonna glow, made a new layer that was all black, and then just made those lights white and just saved that as a PNG, and then set that as the emission strength. I just wanted to quickly show how I get that Borderlands style outline on the object. So there's a couple of ways you can do this in Blender. One of them being the freestyle method where you'll get the rendered outline. And if you go through all the settings with that, you can make that look pretty good. But the way that I did this here was just adding an extra material, changing the surface to a mission with the black color, then selecting back face culling. When you go into the modifiers tab, you can add a solidify modifier. And then when you go down to normals and materials, you go flip high quality, set the material offset to one, that'll select the second material, push the offset all the way up and then increase the thickness. And then when you switch to rendered mode in EV, it'll give you a black outline no matter what angle you're looking at. This doesn't work in cycles, but it's great for a quick outline effect in EV. So for the animation stage, it was actually pretty simple. I just tied everything together with empties. That was purely just to keep things less complex so that when I was animating each object, I wasn't animating four or five separate objects at the same time. And all I ended up doing was doing a couple main keyframes and then changing the interpolation mode. So the default interpolation mode for Blender's animations is the Bezier curve, I'm pretty sure. Um, but you can change that if you just right click on the timeline with your keyframe selected. I did this and I chose the bounce interpolation mode. This is sort of adds that extra sort of wiggle to the animation, makes it look a little bit more animated than what the basic keyframes would have animated to. For the main tray, I just used a simple armature, nothing too complicated, it was just 
object constraints to the bones that I had laid out. And then I just went through and animated those the same way I did the rest of the chest, just with simple keyframes and then changing the interpolation mode to bounce as well. So yeah, that's pretty much how I made this Borderlands chest in Blender. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you like the video, like it. Hopefully I'll have a couple more videos out soon. So if you want to see those, you can subscribe. Um, yeah. Alright, bye.